What's cracking? Big dogs. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the headquarters. And wow, do we have a jam-packed feature film today for you. We have had an unbelievable amount of fuckery going on in the NFL over the past few days. Trades and signings and tags, whatever fucking Calvin Ridley. I kind of feel like the Calvin Ridley suspension... One gives him extra swag and makes that signed helmet via Calvin Ridley more valuable, honestly. If anyone wants to purchase it for $1,500 or $15, be my fucking guest, okay? My name is Nicholas. This is BDGE. Big dog's got to eat. And we're covering everything that happened over the last few days today. Russell Wilson, Aaron Rodgers, maybe some Mike Williams, and now Carson Wentz just broke on us today. So we have a whole lot of gang shit going on right now. I don't want to waste your time. I don't want to waste my time. Neither of our time is valuable to begin with. So I guess we could just sit here and waste it. Fuck. Fuck. First thing we got to do is tuck our shirts in. Zip up. And stop yelling. First off, Underdog Fantasy has Superflex best ball drafts going right now. Bet y'all didn't even know they had best ball drafts going right now for the 2022 seasons. So you can already start drafting and winning money and getting a bunch of value over your competitors that aren't paying attention on Underdog Fantasy. All right, so underdogfantasy.com, that will be linked in the description. They got the app. If you click the link, it'll take you to the Google Store, it'll take you to the iTunes Store, whatever kind of phone that you got. And if you deposit for the first time, okay, right now, it's your first time depositing, hearing about Underdog, and you use the promo code BDGE when you do so, they're going to match whatever you deposit. So 10 turns into 20, 20 turns into 40, and Drew Locke turns into Russell Wilson. You've got a lot of problems in Seattle. Given these trades and these movements, we're able to dissect where they're going to be going in drafts. Adam Schefter dropped the bomb. Trade package. Denver gets Russell Wilson and a fourth round pick. Seattle gets Drew Locke, Noah Fant, Shelby Harris, two first round picks, two second round picks, and a fifth round pick. God damn. Specific picks. Denver is trading to Seattle in exchange for Russell Wilson. Denver's 2022 first, the ninth overall pick. Denver's 2022 second, the number 40 overall pick. 20. 23 first and second round picks. All Denver's picks, all right? So I don't even know why they had to fucking break down. They could have just said it's all Denver's own picks. Shefty, turn your fucking brain on, my guy. And realistically, you know, as far as fantasy is concerned, Russ goes to Denver. Drew Locke, Noah Fant go to Seattle. And there's a whole lot of first round pick gang shit going on here. If we take a look at the ADPs, Russell Wilson moves up. Javante Williams somehow fucking moves backwards. That makes no sense to me. Judy moves up. Sutton moves up. These are probably not uh, updated that quickly. I bet if these were updated again over the next three days or you waited like a week, they would be significantly higher. But Russ Wilson clearly goes from a uh, back end of the second round pick to a mid second round pick. I think that's probably about right. We're going to break down every player and their impact right now in fantasy football going forward from this trade, but interesting to note nonetheless, right? That's what I'm talking about. That's why you sign up for underdog right now, because you get to pick Javante fucking Williams in the middle of the third round. He's going to be a top seven pick in three months. Ridiculous. All right, so let's start with Russell Wilson. And last year, we know Russ had a very, very big drop off here. Shit was ugly. Shit was messy. He wasn't running the ball. His fucking deep balls look like they were overnight delivery packages from FedEx going to the next state over. I'm willing to chalk the shit up to that finger injury he had, man. He just was not the same after the finger injury. So I'm willing to throw away, like he did with most of his passes, the overall fantasy season from last year. But I do want to dive into something that Denny Carter, if y'all don't follow him, I would suggest doing so on Twitter. He's a funny dude. Uh, wrote up in the impact of Russell Wilson going to Denver. He said, Wilson's touchdown rate was right around his career mark, as was his completion rate and air yards per attempt. He led the league with a 10.4 average depth of target. A mere four quarterbacks had a higher completion rate over expected than Wilson in 2021, and no signal caller had a higher air yards per attempt. His depressingly inefficient performances after rushing back from a serious finger injury, shout out to the docs out there, dragged down his season-long numbers enough for fantasy managers to consider Wilson a 2022 afterthoughts. Makes a lot of sense. Has a finger injury. You start to combine that with the fact that he's old and he's been playing on a shitty team with a shitty offensive line. And you just start putting these little seeds in your head that eventually spurred out this bullshit that you tell yourself as a storyline that Russ stinks and Russ fell off. But I think 
then he did a good uh, a good job of kind of subjugating the entire. I'm just making up words. I was about to say like subjugating the entire premise of Russell Wilson's fucking series. I don't know what that even means, but he did a good job of telling us what happened last year with Russell Wilson. Russell Wilson is just 33 years old. Okay, that's not old for a quarterback. He could still have five more years of prime Russell Wilson left, and I think we're going to see something close to that. There's two things that are the moving parts here. One is like the offense that Russ goes to now. I think the Broncos, in terms of offensive playmakers and weapons, are kind of like the Walmart version of what he had in Seattle, okay? So you have Tyler Lockett, kind of like Jerry Judy, right? Tyler Lockett's a much more proven, probably a better player, and then you have DK Metcalf, who is the Cortland Sutton. All very similar styles, and you can kind of say it's like A-B, tit for tat, titty for titty there, okay? When you move over the pass catching weapons to the new spot. And you have Noah Fant going over to Seattle. Albert Aquabunum, whatever, however you pronounce his name, stays in Denver. The biggest thing for me, and I don't know why this narrative is not being talked about more, and I feel like I'm the first person that's talked about it, and then this will become a mainstream narrative and I won't get fucking credit for it. So I'm going to be really, really upset right now. I know he said we weren't going to fucking yell. We weren't going to yell, but I'm pissed. Seattle's offensive line last year ranked 25th in pass blocking. Russell Wilson was always under pressure. Denver's offensive line ranked ninth in pass blocking, okay? So they've been an up-and-coming offensive line for a few years, putting different pieces together and drafting on that offensive line. Seattle has literally been like bottom 10 in pass blocking for Russ basically his entire tenure. So now you're giving Russ an actual... Remember how crazy that storyline was for so long about how bad Seattle's offensive line were? Like, once we get him an offensive line, he'll be good, he'll be good, he'll be good. It never fucking happened. We never got him an offensive line. So we never got to see what Russ would be like in a clean pocket. When he's in a clean pocket, he's one of the best passers, most accurate passers, best pinpoint deep ball passers in the NFL. Cortland Sutton. Russell fucking Wilson, though. He's going to be behind a clean pocket. Last year, last year, and I tweeted this out, Russ was under pressure on 38.9% of his dropbacks last season. That is the third highest rate in the NFL. You know, you want to start making up fake narratives like he's in Denver now, so the altitude's going to help him throw the ball. I don't give a fuck. It's 2022. We don't, we don't judge people for saying dumb shit, right? When it comes to Russ, I am in on him as a top 10 fantasy quarterback next season. He's going to be in that patch at the end of the top 10 rankings, I think. You'll have Trey Lance in like the eight spot and then probably have like the Jalen Hurts's. Justin Fields, I think, is a little bit behind Russ. Probably he's unproven. But like in that range where you're like mobile quarterbacks, maybe better passer, worse rusher, worse worse passer, better rusher. Kind of in that mold, I would probably take Russ over most of those guys given now he's in a really, really solid system. It's really solid offensive pieces, really solid offensive line. I'm really, really in on a Russ Wilson bounce bike year we can talk about Nathaniel Hackett but like let's not pretend like we know what's going to happen there Nathaniel Hackett was the OC in Green Bay comes over as a head coach for Denver it was never Nathaniel Hackett's offense Matt LaFleur was there it was his offense it was Aaron Rodgers' offense I'm not you know chicken or the egg and we know that Matt Lef- uh, Nathaniel Hackett was the fucking egg a cracked egg in this situation so we're going to move from Russell Wilson who I am high on for this move as is the ADP per underdog having him move up to the pass catching weapons Man, you look at Jerry Judy First off, right? And this is a massive upgrade for Judy. This will probably spark his breakout year. So I'm in on Judy as a guy who's going to break out in his third year. If you've looked over the last few years, if you look at any like efficiency numbers, you just see the target accuracy and just like things that he was getting delivered to him terribly. Like target accuracy number 74 in the NFL. But you look at the per reception or per number basis, you know, yards per reception, yards per target, yards per route run, we're all ranked way higher than the accuracy rating, which means he's doing more with what he's given. Target separation, number one, we know he's a crispy, clean route runner. That's not like a very clean statistic right there, target separation. A lot of moving parts there. But target separation, number one in the NFL. So Jerry Judy, this is going to be really, really good for him. What I will say is I started updating my rankings for season long. And you can get those on bdge.store if you are a big dog member. I moved uh, Jerry Judy up to like, he's wide receiver 29 right now. And you could probably make the case for putting him higher than that. Cortland Sutton is right behind him at wide receiver 30. And I might jump him. I didn't I didn't put a ton of thought into these rankings at the moment. I kind of just did a quick reaction to it. You might say like, that's really low, right? Judy at 29, but it's like, I have Devonta Smith at 28, Kadaris Tony 27, Marquise Brown 26, Thielen 25. So I think you could probably argue that he could be put ahead of any of those guys, but I think that's probably the right tier for him and Sutton to be in, be projecting a little bit more upside than we know be assured. So Jerry Judy, I'm not going to go crazy the fact that he is Russell Wilson, but obviously it's a huge, huge uptick for his value. Same thing with Cortland Sutton, man, we just know he's a beast. We know Cortland Sutton's a beast. We saw him do it with Drew Locke for a while under center. We saw him have a big breakout year two years ago before the ACL. Now he's two years removed from the ACL. And I actually, I'm going to put Sutton 
over Jerry Judy and probably by a significant amount because again two years removed from the ACL we've seen him do it with a bad quarterback now he's getting one of the best deep ball passers in the NFL love Cortland Sutton love this move for him so if you can get him as your wide receiver three back end wide receiver two in the middle rounds of drafts I will be very very much in on Cortland Sutton we move over to the last pass catcher in this offense that really matters at fucking all for fantasy that's Albert O because they got rid of Noah Fant now Albert O is this crazy crazy athletic explosive player who very minimal play time last year did really 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 well yards per reception yards per target yards per out run target separation target premium limited sample size again because he didn't play much he had, he had to wait for Noah Fant to get hurt but they're kind of the same mold in terms of like this upper echelon elite athleticism what I'll say for Alberto, I think there will be a lot of like really instant hot takey reactions. He's still not a top 10 tight end to me. He's probably around, I think I put him at like, yeah, so I have Albert O at 15 right now. Uh, I have guys like Gasicki, Fryermuth, Logan Thomas, Dalton Schultz, Zach Ertz ahead of him, right behind him. It's like Hunter Henry, Irv Smith, Dan Arnold. So I think that's about right. I'm not going to like overreact to Albert O and put him in the fucking t- tight end seven role or anything like that. But obviously if you own him in Dynasty, you just basically got what you expected to have from him eventually, but like probably three years earlier. So no offense out. Tim Patrick, KJ Hamler, like whatever. I don't know if you want to spend a 16th round pick on them or some shit. Cool. Javante Williams, man. I mean, this is fucking huge for Javante. Obviously, it's going to depend a lot more on what happens to Melvin Gordon because if Melvin Gordon resigns with Denver, that hurts his value a ton. If Melvin Gordon's out, this is beautiful because we look at last year, man. Javante Williams was so good, so efficient in the middle of the season, the beginning of the season on his like 12 touches a game. When Drew Locke came under center, though, he fucking struggled, right? And, like, Tate Bridgewater is a mere fraction of the quarterback that Russell Wilson is. And if Russ is under center, I mean, lanes are going to be passing accuracy from him as a quarterback to Javante Williams is going to be huge. It was ugly when Drew Locke got under center. You look at all the efficiency metrics and the volume, just everything moving down the field, just getting the touches was not there for Javante under Drew Locke. So it's huge that Drew Locke drawn out of the picture. If Gordon is out, I am very much in on Javante Williams as a top five fantasy running back in 2022 so that is the makeup of the denver broncos now that russell wilson is on the team they are certainly super bowl contenders they have a strong defense they got really good offensive playmakers and now russ just puts them over the top i expect the bounce bike for the kid then we have the seattle seahawks side of things and everything is just fucking doomed man everything is doomed drew lock will now be the favorite i believe i saw him as minus 150 to be the week one starter let's fucking i gotta take this shit off Yes, I was trying to be the fucking next member of the Backstreet Boys. Fuck you guys. Drew Locke. Absolutely no interest in him in fantasy. I don't, I, no one, that was like a tweet where it'd be like, no one. And then Nick, I have no interest in Drew Locke. Like no one fucking asked. Obviously no one has interest in Drew Locke. What this does for the rest of the pass catchers though is fucking brutal, man. Can't trust Locke. You can't trust Metcalf. And I moved both of them down, I believe, past the two Seattle wide receivers. So I have... Lock it down at wide receiver 33. And I have Judy and Sutton above them. And I actually have DK Metcalf one spot behind the two Denver wide receivers. But I'm going to put Cortland Sutton up a little bit further, up to like 26. Metcalf's still behind him. I might take Metcalf. See, the thing is, like, we, we have a little bit of a sample size from last year when Geno Smith took over under center. And Tyler Lockett's numbers were horrible from weeks five through eight. Okay, maybe not horrible, but they were really, really bad considering what he had been doing up to that point outside of Geno Smith, when it was Russell Wilson, right? The volume was actually higher. He had 9.25 targets per game, 5.5 receptions, just couldn't score any touchdowns. And that's probably par for the course when you have Geno Smith as your quarterback, which is going to be the case with Drew Locke as your quarterback. What was interesting is DK Metcalf's numbers went nuts when Geno Smith was the guy. And what I'd probably attribute that to is like, if you're a new quarterback under center, right? And you don't really have chemistry with the playmakers, who are you going to throw the ball to? DK Metcalf or Tyler Lockett? Like, who are you going to take more chances down the field to? DK Metcalf or Tyler Lockett? Probably DK Metcalf. When you're in the end zone, when you're in the tight parts of the field or you're taking risky throws, are you going to try to force it into the end zone to DK Metcalf or Tyler Lockett? Are you going to throw the ball downfield to DK Metcalf or Tyler Lockett? I think the answer is pretty fucking simple. So I feel like that's a little bit of the case. And we might see that carry over from Drew Locke, which is why, I mean, DK Metcalf is just a specimen. Um, And we saw him produce with Geno Smith under center. So I'm going to take DK Metcalf obviously ahead of Tyler Lockett. That's not a hot take whatsoever. But both of them, I would say, are like wide receiver threes right now. If Drew Locke enters the season as the guy, there's been some rumors floating around. I don't know, Jimmy G, Kirk Cousins, Deshaun Watson going to Seattle. If that's the case, we will recover this subject when that stuff happens. But for now, we're going to proceed as if Drew Locke is the center, is the guy tickling the center's ball sack, okay? So those two, tough, tough fucking scene for the wide receivers out in uh, Seattle there. 
And then we have Noah Fant, who becomes like, uh, I'm not drafting. I would take Albert O over Noah Fant for sure. I have Noah Fant down to like wide receiver or tight end 17 or something like that. It's an ugly scene. I don't want the guy that Drew Locke is thrown to. Although, although Drew Locke, I feel like locked in on tight end sometimes when he was the guy in Denver. But yeah, he's down at like number tight end 18, 19 or whatever. And I would take Albert O over Noah Fant. This is a dagger if you own him in Dynasty, man. He was like an up and coming guy attached to hopefully an offense that would eventually give a good quarterback a chance. And now he's in Seattle where they're rebuilding, obviously. Now he's, you know, he must have been so pumped to get out of Denver. To, he's like, yo, I get to fucking play with Russell Wilson. Psych. And now fucking Drew Locke shows up in the locker room. And that's a problem for Mr. Noah Fan. So he's not a guy we'll be drafting in fantasy next year outside of quarterback change. What it means for the running backs, I mean... Uh, same thing I said with Javante Williams. When you have a bad quarterback under center, it just means less overall plays for the offense. It means less overall scoring opportunities for the offense, less time of possession, less time of p- less plays, less accurate targets to you in the back. Like, it's all shit, all right? I was looking to sell Rashad Penny in Dynasty before this. We made a video like a week ago, guys that were trying to sell, or a month ago, guys that were trying to sell. He was on the list, a lot of unknowns. Uh, so he was a guy that suffers from having anyone that's playing under Drew Locke, right? Anyone who has Drew, Drew Locke as their quarterback is going to suffer at the running back position, okay? So that's Denver, that's Seattle. We have Carson Wentz being traded to the Washington Commanders. We have Commander Wentz, the QB1, according to Mr. Animal. Two third-round picks, I believe they swapped for. I don't really know what they're doing here. I feel like Fitz, I, if Fitz can get healthy, I feel like he's going to fucking beat out Carson Wentz in training camp if he's still even under contract. But he's Wentz is an upgrade to, from Taylor Heineke because literally everybody's an upgrade from Taylor Heineke. Taylor Heineke stinks. Wentz also stinks with just a little bit less emphasis in it. You know, I, I'll like turn the gain down a little bit. Taylor Heineke stinks. Carson Wentz. Did that work? I don't know if I turned the volume up or down. If Terry McLaurin can be an okay fantasy wide receiver with Taylor Heineke, he could do basically anything with any other. Quote. I mean, we saw what Michael Pittman did last year. It wasn't like great, but we have the idea of Carson Wentz like attaching on to a wide receiver one. So I like what we saw last year in terms of Wentz throwing the ball to Pittman, and I would assume Terry McLaurin's going to act as the Pittman there in Washington. You wish he would get a real quarterback. Like, you wish we would get prime Terry McLaurin with a real a real accurate pinpoint passer at quarterback. I'll still be drafting Terry McLaurin if Wentz is the quarterback, but probably not. I would, I would draft him at ADP if not having him fall to me at value. Let me check the underdog ADP. Terry McLaurin currently going off the board at 38 overall. Wide receiver 17, 38 overall. Uh, That's probably about right. That's the beginning of the fourth round. I would take Terry at the beginning, middle of the fourth round probably. Uh, I wouldn't do it all the time. He's not necessarily someone I'm targeting. But if I'm in four leagues, you know, and I'm in the fourth round and he's there and one or two of them, I would would pull the trigger on Terry. It's definitely not a downgrade. We'll put it that way. I hope Fitz can fucking play, but... It is what it be. Uh, Aaron Rodgers gets the the fatty contract, so he catches a bag. Devontae Adams catches the franchise tag. I, this is not unexpected whatsoever for me. I, that was pretty much my stance, the entire Aaron Rodgers craziness and saga. So uh, nothing really to report there. Devontae Adams, a high-end wide receiver one. Aaron Rodgers, you know, top seven, six, whatever fucking fancy quarterback. What else happened? Mike Williams re-signed, three-year deal. Love to see it. Don't love to see it for Josh Palmer, but it was the right thing for the offense. Mike Williams is a really, really good piece for them. Hopefully, we don't really know what happened. Last year, something funky happened. I feel like that went underreported uh, because he started off so, 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 so hot and then just cooled off, poured the bucket of water on him. So with Mike Williams, I mean, I, uh, I'll i be drafting him next year, depending on where he is going. That was a dumb fucking statement by me. He is at pick 59, wide receiver 28 or something. I would definitely be in on Mike Williams there. Uh, he's got that big playability. And we saw at the beginning that if there was something that went wrong, then that would account for like what happened with him over the second half of the season in terms of like injuries or whatever. So I think uh, Mike Williams is a legit good pick at the end of the fifth round, early sixth round next year. I would definitely pull the trigger there. I think that is it. I just want to get you guys something out quickly. Uh, if you're in Dynasty and Rookie Shit, we just did a video this morning. This is two videos for y'all today. We did a video recapping the NFL Combine, the winners and the losers at the running bike position. That video will be linked down below, but make sure you go check out Underdog Fantasy. Get drafting right now. Use the promo code BDGE when you do. Uh, and hit the thumbs up and subscribe to the channel, all that shit people on YouTube tell you to do. So that's it. I love you, and I am out.